All right, this might seem crazy, but hear me out. I wanted to challenge my team building and actually use my brain for once in this abyss, instead of just defaulting to my go-to teams. So I concocted this Floor 12 Spiral Abyss challenge where I need to use a different team for each chamber. I can't swap artifacts between any of my units, and I have to 3 star clear every chamber I go through regardless. So, for example, if I use a Shao team for 12-1 chamber 1, then I use a Hu Tao team on 12-2 chamber 1, that same Hu Tao team must still be able to 3 star clear 12-1 chamber 1 in order for it to count. And as the final kicker, I can't use any of the top 8 teams used in SpiralAbyss.org in each chamber. I mean, not like it matters because it's data that means jack shit anyway, but I just want to freaking include it. This is the ultimate test of patience and suffering. You're welcome and enjoy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening YouTube, it's your Slime King, the Jima Man, and welcome to another video. So now we go to Notepad Gamer status. This is a list of units I currently have on the Slime account, and I will be putting X marks on the units I have already used to make it more visually clear what else I have to work with. The first teams I will be running consist of Ito, Goro, Venti, and Albedo for 12-1 Chamber 1, and Ningguang, Yunjin, Sara, Zhongli for Chamber 2. Chamber 1 should be a breeze no matter what, as I am bringing the Animo Archon. And it's pretty obvious that this floor was tailor-made for his burst. I might have no way of generating a shield, however, but with the Pyro Aura being periodically applied, that will become the source of shields as Ito generates Crystallize with each attack under his burst. Overall, this chamber is not much of an issue with the selection of units I made. Gora is obviously there to support Ito. He has Exile, which provides energy for the entire team, but for this floor that has so much clear particles anyway, it doesn't matter. However, remember, I can't swap artifacts, so this actually ends up being to my advantage. And Albedo provides some consistent off-field damage, and I think one thing that is often overlooked with Albedo is his actual great synergy with Venti. I know, I know his burst doesn't deal a lot of damage, but his burst does have a synergy with Venti's Vortex. The more the enemies are grouped, the more Albedo's Blossoms will hit all the enemies. Remember that Albedo's Blossoms from his burst spawn next to each enemy currently inside his Isotoma. So if Venti brings all the enemies together, each Blossom spawn will hit each target caught inside Venti's burst, allowing Albedo's burst to achieve peak damage. I like to think of it as a copium version of Ganyu's synergy with Venti. It's a synergy that doesn't quite stack up as high as the quadratically scaled drug that is the Celestial Shower, but it's a damp joint that's been sitting under your bed for weeks now, but you are craving to have some of that copium, and if any copium is better than nothing, that's his synergy. Overall, any team can work for this chamber, as long as you bring Venti. Venti check, anyone? And the same goes for Chamber 2, honestly. The two Ruin Guards are basically freebies at this point, and you can literally run a Vape Barbara, a Freeze DPS Crit Kokomi, Cryzuha, Cryo Zongli, Physical DPS Compound Bow Fischl, and the list goes on ad infinitum. I'm freaking serious. At this point, when you see Ruin Guards, your mouths are freaking salivating at the chance to speedrun these motherfrickers. What I do hate though is that they purposely spread them apart so that you can't destroy them in 10 seconds. Remember the two Geo Vishap Floor 12-1? Those were the pinnacle of good times, my friend. And I would literally retry that chamber over and over again just to get better times. Alright, next up is a team for 12-2. The notepad is saying hello once again. Remember, these teams still have the 3-star 12-1, so I can't just put in a good team for 12-2. Though, it's not as if I have any other broken choices left, as I already used Venti for 12-1. And you might think Kazuha would be a good option here. But again, remember, my last team for 12-3 needs to be able to 9-star clear this whole abyss. So, the team I have chosen would be Xiao, Animo MC, Lisa, and Chi Chi for Chamber 1, and for Chamber 2, it's gonna be Sucrose, Chong Yun, Bennett, and Sin Cho. Ooh, yeah. This run started out okay. This team in my head worked. <laughs> there was the Copium and Emo Res Shred from Animo MC and Grouping, Heals from Chi Chi, and Lisa's Damage Reduction to Amplify Shao. However, <laughs> I quickly realized after about a hundred gajillion runs how bad my first team really was. 
Or perhaps it's because I underrated just how difficult 12-1 Chamber 1 was. Keep in mind, I was running a shieldless comp, a comp that basically had no damage aside from Xiao, a comp that relied on an emo MC scuffed grouping, and a team that relied on Chi Chi's healing to survive. Regardless, I ran into the first problem in my challenge run. But we'll get to that in a minute. First, enjoy the montage of repeated Xiao deaths. Mark me, please. Okay, goodbye. Fuck this team. Mm. I didn't think this was the team that was gonna fuck me up the most. I'm not gonna lie. I fucking hate Shao this in this fucking first half, man. Oh shit! While Animo MC did a serviceable job at grouping the enemies, the problem reared its ugly head faster than a laxative induced shit peeking out of your anal orifice. The first team I used just did not have the elemental application to get rid of the pyro aura. Chi Chi's cryo is just not enough, and one tick of cryo application isn't enough anyway to get rid of the pyro gauge. Shao's Animo swirl took too long to completely eliminate pyro as well, and I should have known this. This floor was similar to the high tide, low tide abyss back in 2.0, and Xiao on that floor was terrible as well. However, I was merely thinking of the context of 12.2 that I forgot how painful it would be to try to clear the chamber before it. That is the main dilemma I ran across. The team I used next tried to fix those issues. Back to Notepad Gaming. To alleviate this problem, I started with minor tweaks to the overall game plan I had. I replaced Chi Chi with Raiden and hoped her Electro application would be enough so I can finally deal enough damage. However, I quickly realized again that running a no healer comp with Zhong Li was another bad idea. Look, I was quickly driven to madness by my first Shao team and at this point I just wanted to freaking clear it and a scuff Shao and team I thought would be enough. The reality is harsher than it sounds. As it still took me a couple of tries and it was still painful as the Kairagi still needed to be grouped. But the potioneers would throw in elemental attacks in the fray that will utterly freak you up if you are caught standing on it. I mean, if you are in the middle of a freaking burst animation and they throw shit into you, once it ends, you have no time to dodge it and you are forced to take damage. That is one thing I failed to take into account. So, I finally managed to clear it after much frustration and probably throwing my goddamn mouse into the wall hoping it would break and I didn't need to do this anymore, but it didn't. So we move on to the next chamber with a better or worse. Finally, the next freaking chamber. I decided to use Sucrose Bennett since Cho and Chong Yun. Look. I realized with my first strong uni that something wasn't right. Yes, I had Shangling instead of Sin Cho, and on top of that I fricked up the rotation so bad, the moment I Bennett burst first before E, I knew I had to restart the run. And this team didn't exactly work, as Sucrose can't enable properly without Sin Cho there, which meant I had to use Carry Bennett, but my Bennett was not geared properly, and I couldn't swap artifacts anyway! So I sat there, staring into the void of my existence, wondering what the hell am I doing with my life? And why the frick did I have to use Shaodin Healerless again just to get back here again? So I said, frick that. We're going back to the drawing board, boys. Here's my notepad. It says hello. In 12 1 teams, I use Zhongli with Ningguang Yu Jin Sarah in order for me not to experience pain again. And I need to inject the analgesic known as Zhongli's shield to my Shao team. So I had to redraft my teams in order for that to work. <sighs> Let's start all over again. 
All right, please pretend you didn't see the first eight minutes of this video. No, really, please. I'm trying to erase that suffering from my psychologically scarred slime brain. Please. With enlightenment and hindsight on my side, my revised first half for 12 1 is now Ningguang, Yujin, Benti, and Raiden. And second half is Ito, Goro, Albedo, and Sarah. There's a reason why I used all of my Geo units on the first floor of this abyss, and it's that these teams would be pretty bad if you descend deeper into the abyss. And since I have most of them built, it would be better to use them on floors that I could use them on instead of further handicapping myself with a Geo team on 12 3 first half or second half. Before any of you say it's doable to clear with mono geo teams or geo -led teams, I already tried it and it took me goddamn three minutes to destroy the pyro lector shield, okay? So no, I am not going to do that. For this challenge, they will be relegated to slaves to 12-1 only. I may be a geo main and I may be a freaking suffering Shaodin lover right now, but I understand that geo is almost always never the best option in Abyss. Except of course, when pitted against the wolf lord, but I hated that as well as it felt like Geo was the only option. Look, I'm all for strategic employments of units, but when you are forced to run Geo that severely limits your options in team building, that actually has synergy. I mean, okay, I just ran a freaking Shao team that had Chi Chi in it. I don't think synergy is even in the freaking cards right now. And I say that, but in this Spiral Abyss challenge, I will be forced to run such suboptimal teams that I may reminisce of the Wolf Lord teams I used fondly. Because compared to the Shao teams I used earlier, freaking... <coughs> Forget about it, please. This is the last time I'm going to bring it up. I think I'd rather run a comp with a level 20 Noel to kill the Wolf Lord. These runs went well without a hitch, obviously. If I just swallowed the ego of trying to run a healerless or shieldless shout team in the first place, all of this would have been avoided. But that's part of the challenge, <laughs> I guess. Trying to make use of every member of your team or every member of your account so that the final teams that I do end up using will have the easiest time as those are the teams I need to truly clear all floors with. God, that ended up being a word vomit. I'm so sorry. Don't worry, I will spare you the pain of going through this floor with my next teams. Cue the freaking manjo. This is a good time to get back to Notepad Gamer status anyway. For 12 2, I had a simple choice to make. Initially, this was a Shao team on the first half, and a messed up variation of Sucrose National on the other half. As I said, I switched the teams around to facilitate an overall easier time to clear the first floor. You bet, your mama's dollar ass, I wasn't going to suffer the pain of a hyper carry Shao team again on 12 1 first half. For 12 2 first half, I'm using Sucrose, Sencho, Shang Ling, and Benetto. And the second half consists of Shao, Jean, Chi Chi, and Zhang Li. <sighs> Look, I try to veer away from meta teams as much as possible for this challenge run, but it could not be helped. At this point, my brain was slowly being melted into the same group that makes up my slime condensation of a body. At least it's not on the top 8 used teams in the Spiral Abyss. .org. <laughs> that counts, right? 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 Other than that, there's not much to say about the first half, as I am using a team that by many people's standards is already pretty good. By the way, I am well aware I am doing scuffed rotations and all hell in this run. I... Look, I haven't played this team in a long time. Shall literally suck all the life energy out of me and made me worthless! Yes, I know it's a skill issue. Nevertheless, I cleared pretty comfortably as Sucrose grouping, and just the overall damage this team provides made short work of these Whopper flowers. Now we move on to the real struggle bus of the show. My Shao team of absolute worthlessness! <laughs> Oh, oh. It's, it's been pretty obvious that I haven't played too much Shout teams in this abyss, as I do not know a goddamn thing in terms of strategy with his teams. I have used my luxury of owning Kazuha and Venti and abused it to not feel the true pain of this abyss. With Venti and Kazuha, I rarely had to think about proper positioning and grouping of the enemies in the abyss. I also did not fully realize just how much damage the Lecter national team actually vomited out from their Hoyo burst sucking intestines. If it's not crystal clear by now, it will be apparent later that I failed to group these motherfuckers properly. Without a grouper, it is more imperative for you to actually aggro them correctly in order to fully consolidate Shao's AoE. What you want to do in this floor is to have them get their shield phase at the same time, so that you can easily swirl them all together with Shao's plunges and Jean's burst. However, this run, I did the exact opposite of all those goddamn things. They shielded it up at different times, and they were so far apart that you would praise them for observing proper social distancing. 
What I should have done was to go hard left or right near the edge of the arena, wait for the Hydro to lunge forward towards you, while the other two Lecters grouped up together. Once the Hydro has lunged, you go to the center when they will all just hurt towards you, allowing you to consolidate your damage with the carefree notion that the Hydro Herald will not lunge again for a bit of time. With that simple tech, I could have easily grouped them and make them all shield up at the same time. <laughs> well, at this point I spent hours trying to make a scuffed shout team work on 12-1, and my psyche has degraded to the point of monkey unga boonga. That is the cost of theory crafting the wrong teams at the start, my friends. It takes a mental toll that chips away at you until you are merely a non-sentient slime monkey that simply attacks whatever it sees. Monkey do, monkey see, monkey do whatever the hell he wants! Do as I say, not as I do. Regardless of all my mistakes, I was still able to clear this side. Barely. Anyway, now that this whole hellhole is done with, it's time to finally finish off this challenge. Cue the frickin' montage again, chief. Hello. This is my notepad. He says, You! Alright, I'm finally free of scuffed shout teams, and this is my list of units and what is currently available right now. Now, I treaded carefully with picking units for my first four teams, and I had to keep in mind that they all have to have usable artifacts without swapping. As such, I made sure the remainder of my units left have decent artifacts, though I'm pretty sure some of them have copium 5100 crit ratios. Remember, these teams have to clear all of Abyss with nine stars, and as such, everything to this point has been perfectly planned, and that plan has been executed meticulously to utter Perfection. 12th first half will consist of Kokomi, Beido, Fischl, and Yaimiko. While second half will consist of Kazuha, Rosaria, Kaya, and Sinyan. Yes, you heard that right. Sinyan. For the first half, as I said, I ran Kokomi Taser with Tri Electro. Since I used up all of my Animo units that are worth a damn, this was the next best choice. Kokomi is also great against the Pyro Lectors. While this team has no innate CC, it hardly matters as Beidou's AoE damage, paired with Yai and Fischl's off-field damage, is enough even for 12-1 and 12-2. It also can't be understated that being an on-field driver, Kokomi's healing basically allowed me to brain-dead the floors leading up to this. Kokomi is using an R5 Hakushin Ring with Ocean Hued Clam, while the other three units just use whatever combination of Emblem or Thundering Fury or Glad I had left. I especially emphasized in my team building that I needed to use a Kokomi Taser variation the moment I decided to do this random stupid challenge, as I had no doubts that this team would have no troubles clearing all of this Abyss rotation. And as such, this floor literally posed no problem. The only real tip I can say is that going to the edge of either side will help you group the Pyro Lectors, and everything after that should be easy, breezy, not scuffed shout team, easy! Alright, now this is the moment you've been waiting for. Sinyan, meta, team. That's right, all the floors previous to this have been 3 star cleared, primarily because of this Liyue resident rock star. No, but I really she's just here for emotional support. The real star of the comp is obviously Kazuha. Uh, initially, I wanted to make a reverse melt comp, but that idea quickly degraded as I needed both Bennett and Shang Ling. Then the next thing I considered was Kryzuha. This was also impossible, as Sin Cho would be needed for a team on 12-2 second half or 12-3 first half. Of course, I ended up using Sin Cho on neither chamber because Xiao tortured me to death. But that's besides the point. This team you're seeing right now is simply a scuffed reverse melt team, plain and simple. Sin Yan is running a 4-piece Instructor set, Kaya, 4-piece Lava Walker, and Rosaria. All he has whatever had left. Kazuha is 4vv, and this comp works, because once Kazuha switches in and bursts while Sin Yan's shield is active, Kazuha's burst will always infuse Pyro, allowing you to melt Kaya and Rosaria's damage. And it's apparent that it's enough damage, as I am about to clear this floor. This team is a byproduct of necessity. In this abyss, I needed to use a total of 18 different characters, each with their own artifact set. And with those restrictions in mind, some units who consolidate roles better will be much more valued. And some niche units that are only strong when paired with a certain character becomes much less attractive. I'm fucking done. I am freaking done, but let's take Fischl for example. I could have paired him in my shout team, in my national team, or any team to be honest, but her synergy with his Tri-Electro Core is just too good. And without Fischl, 
Beidou and Yai Miko would not be used in this abyss at all. The problem is I have artifacts for them that can't be used on other units. So in order to consolidate my teams, Fischl had to be part of this Tri-Electro core. So when I built teams, I had to look at what teams I would be clearing from 12-3 first, and then work myself gradually to 12-1. The earlier the floor, the worse the team. And of course, an Anemo unit is required for each half, especially for 12-2 second half. All in all, this challenge run was just pure suffering. <laughs> But at least I did learn a few things about team building, about the bane of my existence that is 12-1 first half, and a plethora of intricacies about the other chambers. Honestly, I'm tired, man. If you made it this far, would you subject yourself to this kind of suffering? Bleh. Twitch, Discord, you know the drill. This is our parting. Farewell.